Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time Tonight, we're broadcasting live aboard the USS Nimitz. And while we can't give you our exact location, we can tell you we are here in the Western Pacific Ocean. We landed here just moments ago after boarding a C-2 Greyhound in Guam and landing on the deck of this massive aircraft carrier that stretches nearly 1,100 feet long. That's more than three football fields. This exact location on the ship, it's called Vultures Row. It is a viewing platform high above the flight deck where the crew and others can observe the flight operations below. Today, the world is marking one year in the war in Ukraine, when Russia unleashed the largest ground invasion in Europe since World War II. All this as the U.S. prepares for a potential conflict with China. Tonight, the U.S. is confirming that they are going to be sending additional troops to Taiwan. That is big news. It is historic because the troops will deploy to the crucial island to help build out a training program amid increasing tensions with China. It's here in the Western Pacific, where America's naval power is on full display. The USS Nimitz with more than 60 planes and 5,000 sailors. Guam is where we took off from this morning. It is considered the tip of the spear, one part of the Marianas, a strategic location used during World War II to launch the bombs that forced Japan to surrender. Today, Guam houses three military bases, Air Force, Navy, and now a new home to 5,000 Marines, the first new U.S. military base in 70 years. Part of a new buildup in the region. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announcing earlier this month the U.S. will expand its military presence in the Philippines. That's just part of our efforts to modernize our alliance. And these efforts are especially important as a People's Republic of China continues to advance its illegitimate claims in the West Philippine Sea. Take a look at America's military might, from Guam to Japan to the Philippines. The Chinese foreign minister complaining again this week that it's all an effort to contain China and prevent it from controlling Taiwan. Democracies of the world will stand guard over freedom today, tomorrow, and forever. China and Russia declared just over a year ago a no-limits friendship. Presidents Xi and Putin set to meet again soon. These pictures show war games and joint naval drills involving China and Russia happening right now. How closely is Xi Jinping and China watching the war in Ukraine? Xi Jinping is likely watching the war in Ukraine very closely because it has both economic implications for China diplomatic implications for China, and military implications for China. Toshi Yoshihara has spent his career studying the Chinese Navy. He says Xi Jinping is learning lessons as the Chinese president considers invading Taiwan. The first is the nuclear saber rattling that Putin engaged in at the outset of the conflict. Now, while Putin's uh, nuclear threats did not stop the West from helping Ukraine, I think it was clear that the United States and its NATO allies were very cautious, took Putin's words seriously. And so Xi Jinping might learn that it might be to China's benefit to similarly engage in early nuclear threats 
Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher is a Marine veteran and chairs the new House committee focused on China. One of the lessons of Ukraine is that when dictators tell you they're going to do something, you should pay attention. President Biden has pledged to defend Taiwan, setting the U.S. and China up for a possible conflict this decade. If this thing really escalated into a conflict between our navies, that would entail a level of destruction and death that we haven't seen for a long, long time. Tonight, CBS News has learned that the U.S. believes Russia will mark the one-year anniversary of the invasion of Ukraine with a barrage of missile and drone strikes. CBS's Charlie Daggett was in Ukraine one year ago when Russia launched the largest ground invasion since World War II. And he reports tonight from Kyiv. Today, Ukrainian troops withstood relentless Russian bombardment in Vuladar, south of Bakhmut which has been reduced to smoldering ruins after months of heavy battle. This is what Russia's lightning advance has come to. A grinding crawl, a far cry from a year ago, when U.S. intelligence predicted the capital, Kyiv, would fall within 96 hours. We are on the balcony of our safe house in Kyiv at around 5 a.m., when Russian President Vladimir Putin announced the start of a special military operation. Moments later, thunderous explosions echoed throughout the country. The Russians had launched airstrikes across the nation and ground offensives on multiple fronts. When Russian forces advanced toward the capital, hundreds of thousands tried to flee. We tried to stop the panic in our streets. People will be fleeing, fleeing to, the, to the border, and it will be the obstacle for our armed forces to move quickly. On those streets of Kyiv, President Volodymyr Zelensky made it clear he was staying put. Instead, he urged citizens to take up arms, which they did by the thousands. Hastily erected barricades and checkpoints went up everywhere, manned by jittery volunteers with guns drawn. Overnight, the lives of millions of Ukrainians changed forever. And the global repercussions of Russia's invasion now extend far beyond the battlefields of Ukraine. With the war now entering its second year and the U.S. continuing to provide rockets, guns and ammunition, there is a growing concern that the U.S. might not have enough military hardware to defend itself and its allies if needed. CBS's David Martin is at the Pentagon, where a recent war game showed the U.S. would run out of a key weapon while trying to stop a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. The production line at the Lockheed Martin plant in Arkansas is gearing up to turn out one new rocket every 10 minutes. It's part of the $30 billion in weapons the U.S. has committed to Ukraine, but just a fraction of the Pentagon's staggering $858 billion defense budget. This is darn close to being the biggest defense budget that we have ever had. Since World War II, the only time the U.S. spent more on defense was at the height of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Lauren Thompson of the Lexington Institute says nearly a third of that is spent on weapons. That is an amount of money that outstrips the entire economy of most European countries. Yet the Pentagon is hard pressed to keep Ukraine supplied with ammunition. For a couple of key items, the stockpile is getting low. What does low mean? Uh, we're at a level where uh, the risk for other war plans becomes great. Retired Marine Colonel Mark Kansian of the Center for Strategic and International Studies says Ukraine's use of artillery shells far outstrips the Pentagon's capacity to make them. They're using about as much in a month as we produced in a year. If the U.S. can't keep Ukraine supplied in its fight against a decrepit Russian military, what would happen to American forces in a war against the number one threat, China? The United States was critically short of a couple of key munitions, particularly long-range uh, anti-ship missiles. Kansian recently directed a war game in which the U.S. tried to stop a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. Did the U.S. in these war games actually run out of these long-range anti-ship missiles? Um, yes, the U.S. ran out of these, these missiles in the first few days of the war. Even though it ran out of the missiles, the U.S. won the war game by stopping the Chinese invasion, but lost dozens of ships hundreds of aircraft and thousands of troops. 
It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion meaning two billion people will die during this time. Luke 21:25, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. The skies of Gaza lit up with Palestinian rocket fire and Israeli airstrikes today. Just hours after Israeli troops stormed into the city of Nablus in the occupied West Bank on Wednesday. The raid conducted in broad daylight, meeting resistance from an angry crowd of Palestinians hurling rocks and fireballs. The Israeli military says it was disrupting an imminent attack by terrorists from a group known as the Lion's Den surrounding them in a house, and when they refused to surrender, destroying it with a rocket. 11 Palestinians killed in the raid and hundreds more injured, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. Several of the dead were militants, but others were civilians, the ministry says. This, the moment a Palestinian nurse realizes his own elderly father is among the dead. And Israel's military say they are investigating this video that NBC News has verified with people familiar with the location and timing of the incident, which appears to show a Palestinian man shot in the back as he runs away. The Palestinian Authority calling the raid a massacre and the State Department voicing concern. We recognize the very real security concerns facing Israel. At the same time, we are deeply concerned by the large number of injuries and the loss of civilian lives. Violence in the West Bank now at its worst in 20 years, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. And this morning in Gaza, Palestinian groups firing rockets into Israel. Most were intercepted. Israel's Air Force striking back against what it says were Hamas militant compounds. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu showing no signs of backing down in the face of questions and criticism over the deadly raid. <laughs> Telling his cabinet, we have a clear policy to strike terror powerfully and to deepen our roots in our land. <laughs> Hours after the airstrikes, Netanyahu giving new administrative powers over the West Bank to one of the most far-right members of his coalition government and openly defying the Biden administration. This month, approving Jewish settlements in the West Bank previously considered legal even under Israel's own laws. Today, meeting with a delegation of Republican U.S. senators showing their support for Israel, led by minority leader Mitch McConnell. Expected to also meet Democrats, led by Chuck Schumer, who are also in Israel. It all comes as Netanyahu faces ongoing mass protests over his plans to weaken Israel's judiciary. He says it's a badly needed reform to curb activist judges. But critics warn the move could fatally undermine Israeli democracy. The Palestinian Authority hemorrhaging credibility with its own people and losing security control in parts of the West Bank. Now, with Palestinian anger rising, gunmen on the streets, and Israel holding its hard line, fears the worst may yet be to come. A tense situation playing out there. Raf joins us tonight from Tel Aviv. So, Raf, historically, the U.S. has always played an active role in trying to settle these disputes. Do we know what the Biden administration is doing right now? Big picture, there really is no plan. You speak to Biden administration officials, they are very pessimistic about restarting Israeli-Palestinian peace talks. They're very pessimistic about one day getting to a two-state solution where you have an independent Palestinian state along 
alongside a secure Israel. But in the narrower sense, they do have a plan to try to strengthen the Palestinian security forces. And the American hope is if the Palestinians can take on these militant groups themselves, the Israelis will stop raiding cities like Nablus, and that might buy some quiet, at least in the short term. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. The Bible tells us there are three possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17, 9, in that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow, and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. A long forgotten prophecy that has recently been rediscovered by Bill Salas may enlighten us about the fate of Iran's current nuclear aspirations as we read in Jeremiah 49, 34 through 37. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the foremost of their might. In this prophecy, Jeremiah predicts that Iran will suffer the fate of a broken bow, which might imply that the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps will be unable to launch scores of its missiles at its enemies. Additionally, he declares that Iran will be struck at the foremost place of its might, which today could infer an attack upon its nuclear program. One of Iran's most strategic and vulnerable nuclear targets is the Bushehr nuclear reactor, located in the heart of ancient Elam. Jeremiah continues in verses 36 and 37. Against Elam I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and scatter them toward all those winds. There shall be no nations where the outcasts of Elam will not go. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies, and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them, my fierce anger, says the Lord, and I will send the sword after them, until I have consumed them. Jeremiah informs that the attack upon the ancient territory of Elam will produce numerous refugees, perhaps even turning into a humanitarian crisis. Exiles will be dispersed worldwide as if being blown about by overpowering winds. In addition to the Lord, Iran has enemies in this prophecy. Israel seeks to prevent Iran from becoming a nuclear nation. Additionally, Jeremiah says Iran has fiercely angered the Lord, and that provokes the Lord to cause a severe disaster inside of Iran. Perhaps this alludes to a nuclear disaster caused from a strike upon Iran's Boucher nuclear reactor. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords. Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes, many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you.
These are the modern day nations listed in Ezekiel 38 and 39 who will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel. Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8 and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoiled for their servants then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, you touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin, the infamous Gog of Magog, that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator, who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. Jesus speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. In Central Florida this morning, a terrible story where a teenager is accused of killing a nine-year-old girl and a local TV news reporter. The Orange County Sheriff says it happened near the scene of another murder allegedly committed by the same suspect. His name is Keith Melvin Moses. A, phono, a photojournalist and the girl's mother were also shot in this incident. Manuel Bohorkas is in Orlando with more on the reporter who died while just doing this job. Manuel, good morning. This is very tough to hear. Heartbreaking on so many levels. Other reporters who were at that scene described seeing the gunman simply walk up to the news crew and open fire. Some of them even try to render aid to their fallen journalists. 
Um, I'm, I'm, I apologize. A local TV journalist was overcome with emotion covering the murder of one of their own Wednesday night outside Orlando. Spectrum News 13 says 24-year-old Dylan Lyons was killed. The Spectrum 13 reporter was engaged to be married. I want to acknowledge what a horrible day this has been for our community and our media partners. The deadly rampage began near a crime scene where a woman was found shot in her car earlier in the day in the Pine Hills neighborhood. Police say for unknown reasons, the suspect returned to the scene. Deputies located two men who had been shot uh, in or near a vehicle. They are a News 13 reporter and photographer who were on the scene to cover the homicide from this morning. The gunman then allegedly went into a nearby home and shot a mother and her nine-year-old daughter, killing the child. Florida Congressman Maxwell Frost tweeted, My heart aches for my community and district. We've had more mass shootings than days in this year so far. This does not have to be our reality. I'm devastated. While the community searches for answers to another violent spate of gun violence in this country, police say the suspect is in custody. He's a 19-year-old with a lengthy criminal background. This is every reporter's absolutely worst nightmare. We, we go home at night afraid that something like this will occur. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Two severe winter storms sweeping across the nation. In Southern California, a rare blizzard warning has been issued. Maria Virial is live in Los Angeles County. Well, I'm about 30 miles north of Los Angeles off the 5 freeway, and as you can see, things are moving very slowly, if at all. And that's because this highway has been shut down. A major thoroughfare in California, hundreds of cars just idling because of this winter storm creating treacherous road conditions. This morning, two major winter storms unleashing its fury from coast to coast, bringing heavy snow, biting winds, and extreme cold. In the west, a rare blizzard bearing down on Southern California. San Bernardino preparing for a once in a generation blizzard warning. While LA County getting its first blizzard warning in more than 30 years. And over in the Midwest, more record snow fell. Dangerous roads leading to close calls like this one. In Michigan, scenes like this. Nearly one million customers left without power after downed trees and power lights. This football coach helping a police officer clear right. a road blocked by a tree. What's your name? Cooper. Cooper, nice to meet you. Yeah. This video showing an explosion Whoa. in northern Illinois after a tree fell on a transformer. Wow. In Wisconsin, two empty cars were crushed after a parking lot collapsed. And while it remains under investigation, authorities say snow is likely a factor. The powerful system also moved through the Northeast. New York State receiving freezing rain overnight. While in Massachusetts, Boston dealing with icy conditions and black ice. Officials are predicting that the worst is yet to come. Snow expected throughout the evening in parts of Los Angeles County. Let me tell you guys, if you're stuck in this, you might as well just get comfy because it may be a while before the highway opens back up, if at all, today. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for not recognizing the signs of his first coming as we read in Matthew 16, 1 through 3. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. The religious leaders of Jesus' day had full knowledge of the prophecies of the Messiah. Yet these religious leaders ignored the signs and still rejected him. 
If the religious leaders of Jesus' day missed the signs of Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to pay close attention to the signs of Jesus' second coming? If you thought the Islamic State terror group had gone away, well, think again. Despite military defeat in Syria and Iraq, ISIS still has thousands of fighters and some 25 affiliates around the world. Now, Western intelligence agencies are bracing for terror attacks after the group called for revenge against Christians. This after a Danish activist publicly burned a Quran in Sweden last month. Dale Hurd reports. <laughs> Protests erupted throughout the Islamic world after the public burning of a Quran in Sweden last month. Prime Minister Ulf Christensen said while the burning was deeply disrespectful, it was protected under freedom of expression. The Islamic State terror group on social media has called for revenge attacks on Christians worldwide. The Muslim holy month of Ramadan begins March 23rd, and last year's observance saw 42 ISIS terror attacks in just three days. The threat of ISIS has returned, and Western intelligence agencies are on the lookout for any signs of a terrorist attack. Security expert Eric Karen says that in the Middle East and Asia, ISIS never went away. They have approximately 16,000 fighters between Iraq and Syria. They control six million people in that region. Uh, they have franchises throughout the world. Uh, we're talking probably around 25 franchises throughout Africa and Europe and here in America. A recent United Nations report also shows the ISIS threat increasing. Terrorism expert Sargis Sengeri says while the U.S. had to defeat ISIS on the battlefield, that alone wasn't enough to stop the movement. You have to kill folks on the battlefield uh, to take ground. You have to do that. But I don't think we ever fought against the ideology that really resonates between the six inches of uh, people's foreheads. So it will continue to fight and will continue to take territory. It will continue to force individuals to either convert or basically, you know, die in the process. ISIS is encouraging Muslims to use any method to kill Westerners, including trucks and nail guns. Karen believes the U.S. could be very vulnerable to a major terrorist attack. On the southern border, the northern border is wide open. We know that there's over 55 million shipping containers that come into America, less than 2% are examined. We need to take the gloves off and understand that this threat's not going away. It's only increased in the last few years. The idea that they don't want to attack us again, like a 9-11, but even bigger, is foolish. They want to destroy America. John 16, 1 through 3. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service and these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Service is the Greek word latria, which means ministration of God, i.e. worship. Muslims kill in the name of Allah, thinking they offer God worship. The Bible tells us they do it because they do not know the Father nor His Son, Jesus Christ. The Christian persecution the church is suffering right now, awful as it is, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, Right before Jesus returns, the greatest political leader in the history of mankind will take the world stage. He will launch a military campaign that will result in his acquiring authority over all peoples of the earth as we read in Revelation 13, 7 and 8. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His empire will be the most extensive in all of history encompassing the entire world, and his rule will be the most demonic the world has ever experienced. He will appear to be the savior of the world, but as he consolidates his power, his true nature will be revealed. He will emerge as a Satan-possessed and empowered person who hates God and is determined to annihilate Christianity. His method of eliminating Christians will be by beheading as we read in Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. For this reason, he is identified in scripture as the Antichrist as we read in 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, 
by which we know that it is the last hour. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.